Hello everyone, welcome to another appointment with Going Expert. This is Rossella and today our guest is Cristina. Hi Cristina. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, being he here with me and to talk a little bit about your uh, ESPA life and your experience. So first of all, Cristina, where are you from and where do you live now? So hi everyone, uh, my name is Christina. I'm originally from Germany, but I've been living abroad for more than seven years now in four different countries. And the one that I'm living right now and we're gonna talk about mainly today is Denmark. So I've yeah. been here now for almost five years actually. Actually in this month, it's five years, wow. <laughs> Time. Congratulations, happy anniversary then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you already said that you have been living in different countries, very different among uh, each other to and from the one that you are coming from. So I'm I'm really curious to hear a little bit about your experience. And I also want to take advantage of this conversation to say to everyone that they can listen and know more about you following you on social media. You are on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and you have an amazing podcast the name of your account and I'm going to share all the links and the info in the description of this video. The podcast and YouTube account are called Beyond an Ordinary Life and your Instagram account is Cree Giardes and you will say it better. What about your social media, your podcast? Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you. So yeah, exactly. So I, uh, I think in order to tell you why I started with social media and the podcast, I need to go a bit um, back in time in terms of when I moved abroad. So when I first moved abroad, I come from this very small town in the in northern Germany, actually very close to the Dutch border where you're located. Okay. Um, it's very, very uncommon there to leave that place or even to go study, etc. So when I uh, communicated my urge of wanting to go abroad, everyone was against it. So I was really struggling, like it was really different um, to how it's nowadays because it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so now in hindsight, I had a lot of conversations like two, three years ago, why I moved abroad and what I was struggling with. And I kind of realized that I wish I would have had someone who would guide me through the process, who would tell me, hey, you're not committing social suicide. This is OK. Uh, you're going to struggle a lot. You're going to have challenges, but you're only going to get more resilient out of it. And you're going to become a different person, right? Because I think when you move abroad, you grow so much. And that was kind of the reason, because I had these conversations with people, especially during COVID, because you would connect more with people also online. And I would have these conversations. And I'm like, wow, I wish I would have had someone who would guide me through this, right? Yes. And it's not like, okay, I'm shit scared to do, sorry for my English, <laughs> you know, to do a podcast because it's something that's very public. But I was like, I really want to do this. I want to help other people. I want to be an inspiration to other people that this is okay and this is a good idea. And fantastic. Thank you. So that's initially why I started and what kind of my why was behind actually going about it because I think. A lot of people always think it's so easy to start with social media, but in the end, it's actually you putting yourself out there, you're putting yourself into the public, which takes a lot of um, yeah. again, resilience from yourself to do such things. So my motivation was more to help others. So that's why I started in the first place. Yeah. And um, my account is called Kriegerdes. So I'm on, uh, yeah, as you said, Instagram, TikTok, and I have a podcast which is published on um, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, as well as some of, um, I'm also merging it into YouTube now. So uh, it's called Beyond an Ordinary Life, as you rightly said. And um, yeah, I love having conversations like you do with me right now to basically um, show people what other people did, also in terms of what are the options. You don't mm -hmm. always have to be an expert. You can also study abroad, you can do work and travel, you can even, you know, go to school abroad, etc. There's so many options that a lot of people don't know about, and also even publicly funded options. So, and that's what I wanted to like basically create better awareness of so that people um have higher chances of, you know, yeah. areas and actually go mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, I really like that. And we are very aligned on what are the values so for what we are doing um, online and offline probably as well, because it's very important. And I moved abroad first time 11 years ago. So we are we are sharing more or less the same experience. <laughs> Things were not as like they are now. And it was a little bit more difficult also to find 
information. The issue that there is today maybe is to find the right information from the right people. So if we can do something to help and to inform about the options, because there is plenty of options, then it's it's really, I guess it's a really nice thing that you're doing. And I'm very happy that you are here and you could have the possibility to talk about it a little bit. So thank you. Thank you again for the invitation. <laughs> already <laughs> and then let's help people who want to move to Denmark so you are in Denmark now for about five years almost five years and um, for sure you had to go through the process to register in uh, Denmark how does it work what you remember of course and I want to specify that everything that we are saying today is based on your experience i'm gonna leave in the description of the video the links to the website the official website uh, where everybody can check and find the answer based on their own situation so registration how does it work i think this is always a topic that people are very scared about and um, first of all don't don't be afraid, especially <laughs> when it comes to Denmark, because something I learned, even though I'm from Germany and Denmark is right, you know, at the border, we are so different when it comes to bureaucracy, because everything here is handled digitally. So, mm. and everything is handled very fast. So if you apply to something, you'll have an answer within days or weeks maximum. So everything, first of all, is very handled very nicely. And they also build really nice structures, as you said, in terms of how internationals can go about these processes. They have multiple um, websites. I'm happy to share them with you afterwards, the links, um, where you can go through, okay, what do I need to do? And exactly with examples, et cetera, checklists, don't forget this, this, and that. So it's very, very, um, very like a top-down approach. Mm -hmm. You are guided, um, basically, to do so. Mm -hmm. like I've, I've never experienced as, as you said I lived in the US before and Mexico and Malaysia and now in Denmark and I've never experienced it being so nicely organized so first of all you know don't panic because it's very good organized uh, very good yeah organized yes and it's not so fast you say so you yeah. have things within days or yeah weeks if it's too busy That's maybe true. and yeah. I believe you're gonna get an ID identification number or something like that Exactly. And there's two things that you basically need. And and I'm telling it out of the EU perspective, of course. So if you're an outside of Europe, it takes longer and you also need to pay for it. So the processes are different. So please look them up on the website. But from an EU perspective, what happens is that if you stay in Denmark for more than three months, you need a um, residence permit. Mm -hmm. So if you apply for that through Siri, with, which is the ministry that you need to um, apply it with, and basically what you do, you apply online, you have the application form, you need to fill out different forms, you apply online, the process is completely online, and then you basically wait for them to um, approve your residence permit. And I don't know anyone from Europe who's not gotten it. So it's always depending on what your situation is, whether you're a student or it's a work related, of mm -hmm. course, when you need the reference letter from the company that you got accepted. Okay. So that out and there's also like documents that you can download sent to your company to fill out for this to work through and then the next step is basically that you go to Siri mm -hmm. and once you receive the approval and then you go through the last steps you show your passport you show another document um, and that's like, as I said like a checklist of everything that you need to provide and then you're basically being granted the residence permit and once you have that residence permit you have to go register at Boa Service, which is basically the um, city service. Mm -hmm. um, you register your address, and that's also um, a very important aspect because that's also connected to your health insurance. So you okay. basically do an appointment. You can book it online as well. There are seven different um, cities where you can do it, so it depends on where you're going to move. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then you go and you register, and you can choose. Um, so you always get public... Uh, health insurance yes in okay so yeah you went straight away to the yeah, exactly. but point which is connected as for uh, a lot of countries at least in uh, uh in europe indeed so yeah. you have a public health system basically uh which is like completely free 
Exactly. And this is, um, yeah, it's a public health insurance, um, which you can use for free. Of course, it depends. There's also additional um, private services that you can book. And sometimes even companies offer private insurance on top of it so that you're better covered, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to dentists, et cetera. So that is not fully included. Um, it's always um, recommendable to, to look into private options as well. But generally speaking, if you just need to be covered uh, with general health insurance, that's covered by, um, by uh, SCAT expenses, which are the taxes. So. Okay. And this is where the circle where it circles back to your question in terms of do you have an ID number? Because basically your health insurance card number is your ID number. So okay. that's your CPR, as they call it here in Denmark. And you use that number for everything. It's super important that you get it. And you usually receive the card with the number two to three weeks after you've registered with Boa service. And one very important aspect that you have to do and um, that I find most annoying about the application service is when you register, they have an authentication system because mm. everything, the entire bureaucracy is handled online. So they need to make sure that it's actually you who's logging into the yes. system, right? Which makes a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, it's called MIT ID. So my ID in Danish. Okay. Access to the system, but in order to get access to the system, you also do it where the board service is. Um, you need to apply for it and you get access on your phone, but you need to have someone with you who has been living in Denmark for a certain amount of time to prove that you are you. And it doesn't matter whether you've been here for no time or five years or 10 years. If you re-register and you need to get access to this mid ID, then you need to have someone proving who you are or that it's okay. actually... And how does it work if you know nobody? It's going to be someone from work for example or someone from university if you're moving there yeah, exactly. that's what most people do so um when i did it i actually asked a colleague to help me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um uh, some people ask people in universities i've also seen it before in facebook groups that people ask hey can someone help me out because i don't know anyone yet <laughs> or you ask the landlord or someone like that but of course that's a bit especially in the beginning when you don't know many people yes it's a, uh, it's okay a, yeah, that's quite hilarious. It's the first time that I hear something like that. And I get that they need to make sure, well, since everything is online, that you are you. But it's quite funny this way, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> Normally, passport is enough. <laughs> yeah, but... yeah, they don't, don't accept that. That's actually also the second thing. Um, They do accept passports, but oftentimes they don't accept ID cards. Mm -hmm. so I needed a new SIM card the other day. No, oh, okay. I just didn't want to accept my ID card, so I needed even more certificates to prove that I'm me, because they say that uh, ID cards can be easily, um, you know. Oh, copied. Okay. Okay. Trust, really trusted. They only have a uh, driver's license and passports. They don't have ID cards. Hmm. So also, I think something to remember, like if you go to those official places, always bring your passport. Okay. Well. Yeah, I I I had to say the passport is always the easiest way. Because of course it's okay, it changed a little bit, but once you open the passport, it's basically the same for every country. It doesn't change much, also the size uh, and what are the info that you can find there are basically the same everywhere. While with the ID, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, right. Here in the Netherlands, I had this issue at the beginning because I still had the old ID card, which was, well, which was very big and in paper. So, well, they were making a lot of fun of Italians because of that. And <laughs> also it was like in, almost impossible to scan in the small scanners. And it was very, very easy to copy, to make a fake ID in the sense. Since I have the small card, basically just the, a regular card, it's a little bit easier. So they don't necessarily need the passport. But yeah, here in the Netherlands, also the license, the driving license is valid, while in Italy it's not. So it's always kind of fascinating how we are in Europe and everything works differently. <laughs> Very funny. And uh, I'm like, well, but this is my German ID card. That's my ID in Germany. Like I don't use my passport only to like travel abroad, right? Indeed. But, yeah. instance, like we have to accept the rules that are here abroad because we are here. We bring, you know, our culture to here, but we need to accept what, how they oh, use yeah. Yes, we so, need to uh, blend with that. And uh, if we know already that some kind of 
documents are better than others well just get so, them ready and and move on because it's not a big deal at the end of the day so it's fine okay cool so interesting one thing that we definitely understood already from Denmark is that it's very modern in the way they deal with the bureaucracy so I believe generally speaking bureaucracy is probably even uh fast yeah. and easy to deal with so that's a good news uh what about cost mm -hmm. is it um, expensive to live in Denmark of course every city probably is a little bit different main cities secondary city they kind of have different costs for one bedroom apartments for example what is the average price yeah so as you said that really depends um so i personally live in odense which is the third biggest city in denmark so it's not like copenhagen copenhagen is always much more expensive so please don't take my numbers as a benchmark for copenhagen because that's a <laughs> story but generally speaking um so I actually do track my own expenses, et cetera. And it depends a bit on the months, right? Um, in, in general expenses. But if you talk only the rent, so the studio, so it's basically everything is one room. Yes. And I pay around um, almost a thousand euros for everything, including heat, water, electricity. And it's like 37 square meters, I think. So it's okay. quite, quite expensive. Um, yeah. But I have it to... depends on the point of view. Right now, coming from the Dutch point of view, is not. But considering 36 square meter and in a studio, yeah, it's not cheap. That's for sure. So, yeah. But again, it also depends where you live. So I live so around five and a half kilometers outside of the city. So it's not like city center. Mm -hmm. And where you live, you can also find cheaper options, but you can also find more expensive options. So it really depends. Yeah. But what yeah. I have to mention in terms of housing for internationals is that, for example, when I searched an apartment, because first I was in a student dorm, that was quite cheap. I think I paid like 530 euros for a room. Um, that was quite okay. But it was really hard for me to find an apartment because there's not that many apartments. There's a lot of waiting lists. And in the end, and of course, everyone makes different experiences, but it's always a bit harder for an international, especially if you don't speak Danish fluently, to find an apartment. So you cannot yeah. be as picky with regards to location, price, etc., as if you were a local or as if you, if you had more time to search. So if you know you're moving, I would always recommend search way in advance in order to, you know, um, reduce the price and have a better, you know, location. Mm -hmm. I generally really like this apartment because it's totally new. I was the first to move in, so oh, well. everything. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not cheap, but you can find better options if you have more time. Okay. How is the transportation? Because you say you don't live uh, well, straight to the city center, so maybe you need to move a little bit more to the city center to do stuff. And is 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 it good? And so in Denmark, it's very similar to uh, to the Netherlands, um, it, which is the biking culture. So everyone literally bikes here. I don't okay, cool. Car, um, I usually don't use buses, etc., or the tram because I bike everywhere. And that's okay. do. indeed, I actually think that uh, Copenhagen is on the top in the list of the bike friendly cities in Europe, I believe, or worldwide maybe too. So yeah, indeed. Is this uh, biking culture, which is super exciting. I love it. You mentioned the language. So um, language can be a barrier also. For example, if you're looking for an apartment, because maybe landlord thinks the commitment is not there. Maybe you're going to leave soon if you don't speak the language. I don't know. These kind of ideas. Generally speaking, how important it is to learn uh, Danish and... Um, in, in what situation maybe English is just enough, like social life, working related situations? That's a great question. I think that's whoever you ask as an international Denmark, everyone will have a different opinion about it. My personal opinion is that, first of all, Denmark is, has the fifth highest English proficiency worldwide, meaning very similar to, to the Netherlands, who's also very high. I think you're actually top one or something. Yeah, you're I think it's somewhere in the top. Uh, <laughs> um, and so it means that everyone almost, or almost everyone speaks very fluent English. And that's because of the fact that they don't do dubbing. So all their movies, all their books, everything is in English. So if they want to consume things, they have to do that in English with uh, Danish subtitles. Mm -hmm. So 
that fact, they're more, more inclined to learn the languages better. Plus, they're a very small market. So there's a population about uh, 6 million people. So of course, in order to do international trade, they need to, you know, have different languages. Um, of course, yeah. To, to be able to do so. So generally speaking, everyone's very fluent. Even uh, in the beginning, I was so impressed. The grandma next door in the supermarket, even she can understand you, you know? Oh. But, and there's a big but to it. If you really want to arrive in the culture and you want to be part of the Danish culture and be part of society, you want to be invited to things, you want to be included into conversations, oh. then it's vital you learn Danish. Because that's something I really experience especially in the beginning when I had a student job I felt very secluded because of course the work um, language was always English so that was mm -hmm. fine but as soon as you went for coffee or you went for lunch and you sat together everyone would always speak a, a Danish especially back then because yeah. there weren't so many internationals now yeah. there are much more internationals now they switch to English uh, most of the time but still if you want to grasp what is really going on and also um, Get more closer to the people you have to learn danish otherwise you're never gonna be fully accepted i feel and yeah. that's also something i experienced a lot um even i think after four years someone asked me so when are you going back to germany and i'm like i've been here for four years i'm learning danish how much more commitment do I need <laughs> yes. to show what do i have to show more yeah <laughs> i don't I know what to say and that and uh, yeah yeah I, I always say, and I guess uh, I, I risk to sound as a, you know, like a broken record, but I always say the learning the language, despite the fact that you really need, need it in a more strict meaning or not, is always important to don't feel like an outsider and to really understand and be part of the country where you decide to live. Then if you move, well, you already learned something. So it's just one thing more that you know. But it's um, for integration, I believe is very, very important. So, yeah, learn the language always. Um, Christina, we touch all the important things. That I have another question for you that is just uh, crossing my mind now. Because you, you said it already at the beginning of this video, you have lived in very different countries. You have been in the U.S., Mexico, Malaysia, and Denmark, and of course you're from Germany. So, so many different uh, places, so many different languages, culture, everything. And you are a young woman. How it is? How do you feel as a woman in, you know, traveling so much? I guess it's a very important topic. Also, you know, like empower women to move abroad, to go also in not so common destination. What you want to say as a woman to all the women that are listening? Sure, of course. So I've been in a lot of different places, right? And every place is different. And of course, um, women are always very um, thinking about their own safety, etc. And I think when it comes to that, you always just need to basically listen to yourself. Do you feel comfortable in a situation or should you do something differently? And then usually you always end up being fine so I was never whether I was in Mexico the US or Denmark or Malaysia I was never very scared because I always listened to myself and to where are my boundaries and then go after that and I would always encourage you I mean that's the entire purpose of us being here right I would always encourage you to do it because you grow so much you become so much more self-confident um, you basically flourish so much more you're able to see things from a different perspective and you're also going to be more grateful for what you have because once you see how things are being done in different countries you're going to be much more like it's going to be much more valuable to for you to see what you already have and also what do you want because that's something that i learned from moving abroad is to see what are the options out there what can i do how can I, you know, what can I do from an academic perspective? Mm. How do I want my career to evolve, et cetera. And you see that by seeing different role models that you, you know, meet through your travels. So I can always just encourage you to do that because of the fact that you'll not be the right, uh, the same person as before. So you can only improve, get to know different people, network with people, just like us talking right now. I mean, we would have never met if we wouldn't have uh, gone abroad, right? So. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, I think, the magic behind it, because you get to also understand who you are much more when you get into uncomfortable situations. 
So please do it, but always listen to yourself and listen to what do you feel comfortable with. And also ask other people, right? Usually you will always find like, I'm a German, Germans are everywhere. <laughs> That's something I don't <laughs> well, Ask others, right? Ask them for their advice. Hey, how do you feel? How do you feel comfortable? Is there anything you would recommend me? And that's also how you're going to be feeling more comfortable in your situation. Yes, I like it. I mean, there is nothing to, to add or maybe just dare to be yourself. Christina, thank you a lot for your time and for all the info that you gave us. Uh, I said uh, earlier, all the links to reach out to Christina, to follow her on social medias and the podcast, as well as the links of the official website to move to Denmark are in the description of this video. And if there is any question, you guys can also just uh, comment the video. We will be happy to answer whatever we can. And good luck for everything. I know that uh, you are going to share news in the future on your social media. So a reason more to uh, follow you. And I talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye.